Williamson County, I'm Carrie Hudson, and welcome to It's About You, an informational program about the classes, activities, and special events of the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department. Well, as we sail through February, March, and a fresh new spring season are on their way, and I know that we are all ready for some more sunshine, longer days, and the liveliness that spring brings. To herald the beginning of the spring season, today we'll be talking about our annual spring craft show as well as our Arts and Crafts Open House event, Art Sparks. For years now, the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department has been hosting a spring craft show the 1st of March. This year marks the 20th year for this event, and we're looking forward to another great show. The 20th annual spring craft show will be held Saturday, March 8th, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the gymnasium of the Longview Recreation Center, located at 2909 Commonwealth Drive in Spring Hill. Spring into spring and choose from a variety of original handmade crafts, gifts, decorations, and home items. With nearly 60 booths on display, this is a one-of-a-kind shopping opportunity that you do not want to miss. Our vendors showcase different types of artwork, including textiles like baby blankets and bibs, hair bows and ribbons, and even clothing for American Girl dolls. We also have woodworking items, um, including some scrolled woodwork, wooden furniture, homemade bird feeders, and home and decor items. We have some wonderful recycled items, plus some homemade candles, soaps, lotions, lip balms, even custom paintings, purses and handbags, flower arrangements, wreaths, beautiful stained glass pieces, jewelry like natural stone jewelry and bead jewelry, and some great food vendors as well, um, bringing you some wonderful homemade jams, jellies, sauces, all kinds of goodies for everyone. The Spring Craft Show is free and open to the public, and door prizes are given away throughout the day. In conjunction with this event, we'll also be having an Arts and Crafts open house called Art Sparks. It'll feature an art gallery showcasing professional and amateur works of art provided by students and instructors from over 10 different types of art classes offered by the department. As well, a special section highlighting various projects from our Sticky Fingers Preschool Club, plus free Make It Take It projects, free face painting, and free demonstrations from instructors will be included in this event. Our instructors will also be on hand to explain their arts and crafts and answer any questions you may have. Again, both of these events take place on Saturday, March the 8th. Art Sparks is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., also in the Longview Recreation Center. Both of these events are free, open to the public, and they also have free parking. And if you would like more information about either of these programs, you can visit our website at www wcparksandrec.com. Special thanks goes out to our event sponsors, the Children's Academy, Elite Physical Therapy, and Sports Clips. Additional craft show sponsors include Chick-fil-A, Captain D's, McDonald's of Spring Hill, Zen Massage, Merle Norman, and Tito's Mexican Restaurant. And an additional Art Sparks sponsors, Publix. These are truly two great family-friendly special events that you do not want to miss. So come out and join in us. For the first half of our show today, we're going to be meeting one of our vendors who will actually be participating in our spring craft show this year, Miss Ruthie Winkin. Ruthie, thank you for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure to have you here. Glad to be here. Well, I love when we have the opportunity to talk about our craft shows and bring in actually some of our craft artisans and vendors, because this is something that I could never do. I am always amazed and enamored with people that have artistic abilities and that can actually create something, because I can't create a straight line in the world. Um, so talk to us a little bit about your art. You've brought several different types of examples in here. You do several different types of art. Um, this is actually something that, that you and your husband do together, correct? Right. 
Right, and so you have done some wonderful glass pieces. You have um, enamel paint glassware, um, as well as these are some examples of some dried flowers that you encase in glass. Right. And your husband's actually a woodworker. He does turned woodwork. Right. Uh, well, we're going to have a chance to talk about a little bit of all of this today, but first off, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you began doing this kind of stuff and w what this means to you. Well, um, I'm a master gardener and we spend a lot of money on water. My yard is a huge garden, vegetables, flowers, and jokingly my husband said to me, honey, you think there's some way we could pay for this water bill? <laughs> and so we put our heads together and we came up with these items and he is a wood turner and a fly fisherman and he creates fly rods, beautiful fly rods. So I asked him if he would help me with some of the things that we were going to do like the wooden stands and then he started making his own things and added it to it. So that's how the whole thing got started. And I never thought of myself as an artist but uh, the Brentwood Library set my things up and they made me create a card and put artist on it and so now I'm an You're artist. You're an artist. <laughs> you have invented yourself. That's right. That's all it took. That's all a it took. A little inspiration from the water company and you're yeah, an artist. that's it. I love a lot of the things that you brought in with us today because I think it really exemplifies your passion for gardening and the outdoors. Mm -hmm. Obviously you and your husband are true avid outdoors um, people. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with some of the pieces on this end with your enclosed dried flowers. I mean okay. obviously this takes your love of gardening and the outdoors and just preserves it in a way that you can keep it forever. I think that's the really nice thing. So often like if I have a friend who's sick I can give them an enclosed garden and they keep it. It's not something that gets wilted and dies and it's there and of course I love telling everybody every flower that's in my gardens. Mm -hmm. I, they're all personal friends. They come from my very own garden and the process takes a long time. You plant it, you grow it, you water it, you care for it, you pick it at its peak moment when it's beautiful, when it's got its color and then you dry it immediately and then you enclose it in glass and my husband does all of the soldering work on the outside and creates the little stands mm -hmm. that they stand on. He also puts a little plastic fishing line on it so that you can hang them in the window I was if about you want. to say they have a little bit of line on them so yeah. I'm sure if you hung these in a window that caught some light they would be amazing sun catchers and just push the beautiful color of these flowers into the room. It really does and the little ones like this the smallest ones they can be used as Christmas ornaments so they are versatile and for a lot of different reasons and then I make a great big one. And this is exactly yes yeah. this is a that's a large hanging full size a, piece. Uh, window hanging if you've got the mm -hmm. appropriate place for it. Appropriate place for it. Yeah. But I do love how you're able to carry your passion with you throughout the year in this. Oh, yeah. Even when your garden is gone, these still remain. Yeah. Yeah, and in the winter time I can paint. Paint. You carry your flowers <laughs> onto painted glassware as well. Yeah. Um, now this is where I I am truly amazed because again I can't draw a straight line so people who can freehand paint and create things like this I'm just so jealous of. How, how do you go about sketching out these pieces and coming up with what you'll paint on your glassware? Well you'll notice that the things are pretty simplistic. You know I don't try to make a butterfly look exactly like a butterfly. Mm -hmm. I kind of create it and it's very simplistic and easy and I've, I've never done it before. I'm learning and um, I get enamel paint and it's baked on so that it never comes off. You can wash it. With, I, they say put it in the dishwasher but I use mild soap and water. Mm -hmm. and just to be on the safe side. Yeah and so I just brought a few of the examples and vases. I've got all kinds of glasses and then I hand paint the lantern and my husband does the whole inside. If you lift that up by the neck. Right here? Yeah the neck yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see he creates the little copper basket and I put a candle in it which is easy to replace when it burns out mm -hmm. and those are also hand baked I mean hand painted and baked on and uh, they last forever. And I love, it's a different way of taking some items that are already in your home probably. Recycling yep, to re it. Recycling mm -hmm. them, giving them a new use, a new purpose for the yeah. rest of the time that they are in your home. Um, I, again, love how this is able to have extra life beyond its original means. Well That's my husband will tell you that he has the job of drinking all the wine. That's not necessarily a hard job. <laughs> 
I would agree. <laughs> yes. Um, and then let's talk about some of the stuff that your husband does because yes. he's brought some beautiful Sweet. woodworking pieces out today. Yeah. Um, these are cute. I'm going to reach over real here and grab one okay. of these. Some wine stoppers. Mm -hmm. And he creates it from all types of wood and uh, turns them and then puts them on the actual wine stopper. Mm -hmm. And this one, you can see if you turn it around, has burling on it, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful piece of wood. And um, It's got a little love in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of love. Yes. He loves doing this. He's a unique, and this will be a great gift for someone if, if you know yeah. someone. I mean, who wine is, a, is the thing everybody's yeah. drinking, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? But a unique little home gift for people. He's got some wonderful pens here, too, that he's done. You know, I bought my father and my grandfather some wood pen sets a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that's kind of unique, you know. Not everyone has yeah. one. Um, it's something that they're able to keep for years, and it's very durable. This isn't going to break like plastic. No, it's not, and I think they're just absolutely beautiful, the ones that he does. They really, really are. And then I love how he makes the stands for your enclosed glassware, mm -hmm. too. You guys really are a team with this. Oh, we are. Yeah, I'll run out and say, honey, how do you like this one? And he'll say, hey, come and look. Do you like this one? It's a, we're retired, mm -hmm. and we have so much fun together. We share it. I just, I love it. That's the best part about it. You're able to do this and have fun with it. You do what you love, you know? Yeah. That's, I think, one of the best parts about this. Um, well, talk to me a little bit about pricing. Obviously, these are all things that you sell. Um, so tell us kind of a little bit about the range of pricing or, or where certain things go. Okay. Our economy's not good, and so we try to keep them at a good price. Most things fall within the range of 25, 15 to $25. Mm -hmm. dollars. He uh, sometimes something like this sea urchin, which he hand turns, and he does different kinds. Uh, they they're a little bit more because of the sea urchin is an expensive object. Mm -hmm. But almost everything is within fifteen to twenty five dollars. It's that perfect gift range. Perfect yes. gift range. You don't feel like you've just overspent yourself. Exactly. Well, this is beautiful stuff. People will be able to see all kinds of your artwork at the Spring Craft Show right. in the booth that you'll have there. Um, for people, though, who might like some more information about other types of artwork that you have or other pieces, or if they just wanted to talk to you a little bit more about some of the unique things that you do, do you have a website or a phone number that you could give us? Uh, they could get in touch with our website. Mm -hmm. uh, my am Ruth, E-W, at bellsouth.net. My name, Ruth. And my name is really capital R-U-T-H, capital E, but just R-U-T-H-E, and then W for Winget at bellsouth.net. Makes it easier to remember. Yep. Email address, yeah. always a very useful thing. Um, and then on the off chance that someone maybe saw something that caught their eye, but may maybe thought, well, if that was in blue instead of red, it would work so much better in our home. Do you ever do um, personal requests? Yes, I can custom things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Makes it we can always discuss it, let's put it that way. Very flexible. Sometimes I may not be able to have the flower that they want. They, right. they may already used them or it's past the prime, but we can find a solution to it. Wonderful. Well, Ruthie, thank you so much for taking some time to come in and talk to us today. It has been a pleasure. All of this is absolutely gorgeous. We look forward to seeing this and a lot more at your booth at our Spring Craft Show. We look forward to being there. Thank you. Absolutely. Y'all stay tuned. When we come back, we'll be talking more about our upcoming Spring Craft Show and Art Sparks event. What a great way to get some exercise and spend time with your family. Hi, I'm Steve Hayslip. And I'm Assam Paul Hayslip. And today we're going to show you some rules of the road that you may not have thought about that apply to bike riders. Let's go. That's good. Good pace. On narrow roads like this, cyclists should leave at least two car lengths in between riders. That way the cars have room to get in between the cyclists and pass them individually. You take the lead. Stay to the right. When approaching a stop sign or a traffic light, if a car and cycle are arriving at the same time, the car needs to stay back just a bit, allowing the cyclist room to move in front into the turn lane. This allows the cyclist to turn left safely. If the lane is too narrow, or if the cyclists are traveling pretty much the same speed as traffic, then the cyclists have the right to come out and take the lane. Just remember that everyone has a right
to the roadway. It is a public road, but everyone has to observe the rules of the road. They apply to the motorist and the bicyclist alike. Well, those are just some of the rules. Mainly, stay safe and have fun. And most of all, enjoy the ride. Welcome back to It's About You. We're talking today about our upcoming 20th annual Spring Craft Show. For the second half of our show today, we are joined with two more vendors who will be participating in our Spring Craft Show event coming up on March the 8th. This is Gary and Reba Kiker. Thank you both for joining us today as well. It's a Thank pleasure you. to have you here. Thank you. Now you all do some beautiful paper bead jewelry. <laughs> um, and before the show we were talking about your jewelry and y'all said something very interesting about what makes your jewelry so unique is the paper beads that you use because people I mean bead jewelry is fairly common um, and people make a lot of beautiful bead jewelry but a lot of them are usually more stone based with darker colors <laughs> but you all are able to bring out some truly beautiful vibrant colors in your jewelry and all of this goes back to your paper beads right mm -hmm. correct right Tell us a little bit about your paper bead jewelry and kind of where the inspiration came from in this and how you got started with it. Well, we got started a few years ago when I was trying to raise money to help pay for a plane ticket for my sister. Um, she had a mission trip in um, Honduras and uh, the uh, money was used for a tree that fell in her yard. So I scrambled and got online and tried to learn how to, to make the paper beads. and. Uh, through friends, word of mouth, things like that, I was able to sell enough to buy her ticket. So after that, we kind of relaxed with it for a while, and um, certain little markets and things were sprouting out, sprouting up around the neighborhood. So I decided to give it a try, and my husband introduced me to the Cherokee Tears, which is a natural seed bead that we use in our jewelry, mm -hmm. um, and it just was such a great fit. We put these together and. People have just loved them. They love the bright, vibrant colors. They love the story of the Cherokee Tears, and we love doing it together. Mm -hmm. It's just something we love. Something fun. Well, mm -hmm. and passion is what usually feeds mm -hmm. art, and you all definitely have a passion for this. Talk to us a little bit about the Cherokee Tear. The yeah, Cherokee Tear. Thank mm -hmm. you, yes. Because this also has um, a special link for you all with your ancestry as well. That's right. We both have a, a, a Native American background. Um, from our families, and um, the way we found, I found out about the Cherokee Tear was that a, a Cherokee elder actually came to a Boy Scout event, which I attended, and introduced me to it, and told us the story of the, the Cherokee Tear, and uh, that it was a natural seed bead that uh, the Cherokees used to make their jewelry, and still do to this day. And uh, so we, she gave us, actually gave us samples or to take with us, and I've held on to them for years. And when I showed them to Reba and uh, said this might be something nice to go along with our jewelry, um, we decided to try growing them in our garden, and we grew them in our garden, and that's, that's where we came up with them. But the, the uh, legend that came with the, the, the tear is, is, as the Cherokees walked the Trail of Tears, as they wept um, and their, from their sorrow of the, of the trip, and their, their tears hit the ground, these plants grew, and that's the legend. And uh, they have a, um, a natch, just a natural bead, has a hole already through the middle of the, of the, the seed, so it's uh, something that's really nice to use on. Very unique, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very special and unique in that way, too, as well, I think. Um, well, tell us a little bit about your jewelry. You guys um, obviously have bead necklaces, you've brought some bracelets, you have some beautiful earrings. How do you all kind of come up with your color palettes? Um, what's kind of involved in putting all of this together? Well, the paper kind of dictates the design, mm -hmm. and um, we both just um, use different types of paper, different colors, sort of uh, different textures, and we combine them in a way that, you know, we just try to um, do things that please us, and it turns out that people, you know, really like use them. And they're well. usually people walk up, and the first thing they say is, what colors do I need? You know, so they we just try to create a different uh, arrangement of different colors and combinations, 
so that people can use those in their wardrobe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a good example of that is, is, is this necklace here. And this necklace, it, it's very colorful, but you'd never guess, but it's made of butterflies. Oh, pictures of butterflies. Pictures of butterflies. Pictures of butterflies. Mm -hmm. so, pictures of butterflies. So you never know what you're going to get after you cut it and roll it. Mm -hmm. what you're going to get out of it. What it's going to look mm -hmm. like. And I love that piece because it does have so many different colors mm -hmm. incorporated mm -hmm. into it. It right. would go with anything that right. someone was wearing. Right. Um, I would also love too just the vitality of your jewelry. I mean it okay. really is very vibrant and it has that spring feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean looking at some of the pieces that you have laid on the table today I mean it almost looks like your own garden. It's, right. Yeah it's a lot of variety. We even have more colors than these that we're showing here, but you know, it's just, um, just we're just inspired by the color and the then the varieties. Mm -hmm. Well, now walk me through the process. How is one of these pieces made? Well, I'll let okay, you. Okay, so it. so we take our paper and we cut it mm -hmm. um, to a, a certain length and a certain size, and we actually take it and roll it on a toothpick, and uh, once it's rolled and dried, glued at the end and dried. Mm -hmm. Then we, um, Reba takes a, a clear lacquer and, and puts on the bead so it's protected from getting wet or, right. you know, obviously it's paper, you don't want them to get wet. Um, and then the, the seed, the, the natural seed bead just slides on to, to our, um, our string. Because it already has use. that hole in it right. as it is. Correct. And then we add a magnetic clasp to, to all of our product, and the reason the reason we do that is, and Reba can show you, this is a more of a bangle. You can wrap, wrap. it, mm -hmm. and 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 so by having the magnetic clasp on it, you're able to wrap it more more times mm -hmm. than you could put it over your head. Or, or for butterfingers like me, <laughs> right? I can barely do the the natural clasp on right. a necklace, right? And, and that's hard for everybody. Something magnetic is just going to fall right, right in place for me. And you can yeah. also put something on it if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of people that wanted to use them as lanyards for their work. Yeah. And the safety requirements for OSHA require it break away easily. Right. So the magnets do that. That so. works well too, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Just another little way that you can jazz up that everyday work ensemble. Like I have to sure. wear this lanyard, I have to do this every mm -hmm. day, but you can still make it your own. Absolutely. Right. I love it. It's great. Mm -hmm. I always find, I love it when we can always find ways for for new ways for other things. That's yeah. correct. It's, it's part of the fun and all of this kind of stuff. And then you guys have just a lot of different examples here today too of the different colors and types of beads. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have some of those more muted earth mm -hmm. tone colors. Absolutely. Again, you have the vibrant colors as well. I mean, some of these, the necklace on the far end almost looks like a bunch of Easter eggs strung together. Mm -hmm. um, but lots of different fun shapes and sizes and patterns and all those kinds of things. Tell us a little bit about what all you all make. Is it just necklaces and bracelets and earrings, is there anything special in there? Do y'all ever do custom pieces for people? Well, we or? do. Sometimes when people uh, have a certain color combination or design in mind, we'll, we'll do custom orders. Yeah, and so you can kind of custom colors, sizes right. of Sometimes te team colors, mm -hmm. things Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, yes. That, that's another thing too, you know, there, uh, sometimes the, the size isn't quite right, so we can adjust the size to fit. Uh, properly. Cut your paper to a certain length or mm -hmm. a certain ratio. Or, or even the length of the, the necklace or bracelet itself. Mm -hmm. you know, some people want a one wrap or some people would like a you know, multiple wraps. Right. Because so. I have very thin Tiny. wrists mm -hmm. and so a lot of times bracelets never yes. fit me right because right. they're usually just so large mm -hmm. I can hold my arm down and they'll fall off. Right. Right. And again that's you know. what the magnetic clasp was so nice so you mm -hmm. can wrap that. And yeah, be able to fit it a little bit tighter Correct. if you wanted to. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. It's a great idea too for children's jewelry oh, um, yeah. because it does have that magnetic clasp right. on it. Like you were saying, Gary, you can wrap it to fit around smaller wrists. Mm -hmm. It's going to come off and on easily for kids to take off and take on. Right. Yeah, you know, in ventilating, you know, we're in, we're in jewelry. If you have a clasp and you don't have a husband there every morning to put your clasp on, it your, doesn't work so well. No. Right. So <laughs> with, a, with a magnet, it's very easy to put on and off. And right. You know, so it, it well, and along that line with the children, you know, we were able to teach a lot about this. We've had a lot of teachers come up to us and ask, you know, well, we put a story of the, the mm -hmm. legend in every package, and they ask for a copy so they can teach their children at school. It's so the same thing that's well. kind of cool. And we found a lot of the teachers last fall were starting out with Trail of Tears. Mm -hmm. 
And so it was pretty cool to be able to share that. Yeah, and to be able to pass something along. Exactly, to and that's people. what the Cherokee loved. When we went to Cherokee and we talked to them about what we were doing, they actually gifted us another quantity of beads. And they sell those to help raise money for themselves. Right. So that was a real honor. Mm -hmm. So we get, you know, we're just able to pass on that legend, which is, you know, raises awareness about the history and um, then, you know, just share something beautiful. Promote beautiful mm -hmm. art for the mm -hmm. rest of the community. Absolutely. We love it. We'll be excited to see your booth at the Spring Craft Show. Thank you. Um, I know you guys are returning vendors for us. You participated in the show last fall. Um, and we're thrilled to have you participate in our Spring Craft Show um, in March. Um, for people, though, who might want to see more of your jewelry or if they have questions that they want to ask you, if they would like a custom piece or if they want to see if you maybe have other types of different kind of color patterns mm -hmm. or things like that, what's a good way for people to get in touch with you all? Well, we have a website. It's called FastWaterMoon.com. And um, you can contact us that way or our email, which is KikerRL at comcast.net. Great. Um, and then real quick, what's kind of a, po a price range for some of your artwork? Well, they start at uh, $5 and, mm -hmm. the, and $20 for the longer length with the larger beads. So 5 to 20 is our range. Somewhere that wonderful, very mm -hmm. affordable. Right. Mm -hmm. Really, yes. They mm -hmm. make great gifts for like teachers and schoolmates and mm -hmm. things like that because they're so inexpensive. Yep. Any woman in the family would love yeah, it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've right. even made them for men. We've made necklaces with the uh, Cherokee tears and darker uh, pony beads so that men mm. enjoy Are, them as yes. well. Mm -hmm. And more of their color palette. Yeah. Yes. yeah. More masculine. <laughs> yeah. More masculine color Fast. palette. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, we look forward to seeing you guys at the Spring Craft Show. I do want, I do want to thank you, though, for taking a couple thank of minutes you. out of the day to come spend some time with us. We appreciate it. We do. Thank Great. you. Great. Um, and in closing today, I hope that you all will come out and visit us, meet Ruth, Gary, and Reba, as well as our other craft vendors and our arts and crafts teachers at our annual Spring Craft Show and Arc Sparks event coming up Saturday, March the 8th at the Longview Recreation Center. The craft show is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Art Sparks will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Both events are free and open to the public with free parking. For more information on either event, be sure to visit our website at wcparksandrec.com or call the Longview Recreation Center at 615-302-0971. In closing today, we also want to remind you about some other upcoming events and the extension of our 30 visit pass sale. The Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department sale on our all county 30 visit passes has been extended through the month of February. So don't miss out on this chance to save big. Multi-visit passes offer general admission to all facilities and amenities at a discounted rate and if purchased by February 28th, the all-county 30-visit pass is only $30. That is 50% off of the regular 30-visit pass price and a 66% savings off of a single-visit general admission rate. Multi-visit passes never expire and are transferable to other family members or guests. And again, they are accepted at all of our main locations, including the Franklin Recreation Complex at 1120 Hillsboro Road, the Longview Recreation Center at 2909 Commonwealth Drive in Spring Hill, the Fairview Recreation Complex at 2714 Fairview Boulevard, and the Indoor Sports Complex in Brentwood, located at 920 Heritage Way off of Concord Road. For more information about this great pass sale, again, you can visit our website at wcparksandrec.com. And you can also find out some wonderful information off of our website as well about a lot of our upcoming spring programming. With the spring season quickly approaching, we want you all to know about all of our upcoming activities, special events, programs, and classes. And all of that information is available from our website. You can also get information on how you can vote for Williamson County Parks and Recreation for your favorite fitness club and wellness center in the 2014 Sizzle Awards. We would really appreciate your vote. And again, information on how you can do that is available from our website as well. I want to thank you guys for joining us for today's show. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember Williamson County, it's all about you.